The cliffs and skies and faces one sees on the Aran Islands these days haven't changed very much since Robert Flaherty came here back in 1931 to make his world-renowned motion picture, Man of Aran. Flaherty, America's most famous documentary filmmaker, had been attracted to these tiny islands off Ireland's west coast by stories he'd been told about the hard life of the people. People whose very faces had been chiseled by the storms that lashed their rocky shores. Today, the film Robert Flaherty made here has itself become legend. A glorious celebration of man's heroic struggle against the forces of nature. The film is also a legend the children and grandchildren of Flaherty's one-time film stars have lived with for more than four decades. Our film will try to find out why this great artist worked as he did, and to weigh the consequences when life becomes myth. many a good evening of song and dance in this cottage of my good friends Kate and Peter Faherty over the past six years. These six years I've been coming to the Aran Islands looking for my roots. My name is George Stoney and I make documentary films. Tell me, uh, Mr. Stoney, what's, uh, what's your father and was he born here? My father was born here, that's right. That's right. That's right. He was born in, uh, in uh, Kilrona. Kilrona, yeah. Though my family left Aaron long before Flaherty arrived, I've been as captivated by his myth as any islander. Could you tell me what people on the island think of the film? There were lots of things that never happened really here at all. But in other words, it didn't represent the life of the people at all here, do you see? I don't know, lots of them didn't like it all. Of course, Flaherty, of course, made a good bit on that because he had very cheap labor here then. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. well, lots of the old crowd didn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it made very little of them, you know. Mm -hmm. you no, know, even the poorest, they have their pride, as you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Other islanders can take Flaherty's film in stride. The harbor master doubles as operator of the island's only 16 millimeter projector. On every Tuesday night during the month of June, July, and August, we show the film Man of Erin and the whole dance hall at Corona. And uh, it's shown on Tuesday night, and all the visitors from that's in the island collect and come to the, see that film. And even if they were here for a fortnight or three weeks, they'd come every night, they'd be here whilst the film would be shown. It's, it's a very good film, and all the island people are delighted with it, and they like it all, so they do. And all the island people have seen it well over and over again, anyhow. Those visitors who get no further than Kilronan's busy dockside, with its fleet of modern fishing trawlers, have every reason to conclude that the Aaron Flaherty filmed back in the 30s has been completely altered. There's even an airstrip now. And most prosperous young fishermen have already moved from the cottages of their birth into cement block boxes. Fortunately for me and other romantics who prefer the older ways, there's more than a bit of Flaherty's Aaron left. I've slept under thatch in this cottage every night I've been on Aaron. I've walked the rocks with Peter and heard him tell of storms and ghosts and shipwreck times. The kind of talk Bob Flaherty himself must have heard when he came here to film. The sheen and texture of myth is all about me. Shh. 
shallow currents still take men to sea. And when the wind rises, though I may be safe ashore, I am transported back in memory to a small college movie house in North Carolina, where Flaherty's Man of Aaron first filled me with awe and